welcome to Pure Dog Talk. I am your host, Laura Reeves, and we are on Lightning Round with Laura, our live podcast. We're going to be starting this evening with a special, if I could just make Facebook not keep giving me tips, a special tribute to our friends in the Ukraine. A candlelight vigil, five candles for five days of war in the unprovoked attack by Russia against the Ukrainian people. If you have a candle nearby, join me. If not, our five candles will burn through our podcast this evening for the people of Ukraine. If you have not had a chance to listen to the interview I did with Auntie Lutin of Croatia and Talking Dogs with Auntie, please take a minute to do that. Otherwise, we are ready to roll. So our live lightning round is an ask me anything sort of opportunity. And I am fortunate that I have uh, a backup team that's going to be texting me your comments. Uh, shout out to Stacy Anderson for catching those for me. We have a special guest for you this evening. Uh, my friend Amanda Kelly of Fwaggle Toy Manchester Terriers is going to drop by at some point. And we are going to be able to take your questions and answer them right here. Meanwhile, for those of you who are unfamiliar, Pure Dog Talk is sponsored by Trupanion and Embark for Dogs. And it is going to have some exciting stuff coming up. So if you guys uh, follow the podcast, be on the lookout, as they say, Bolo for some very exciting opportunities upcoming in the next couple months as we partner with a few more organizations as well. So I am super excited to be here and just remember that is our purpose and we are here to answer your questions all the time. We are here to enjoy and knowledge and all of the things that we want to have. Sorry, it says my Wi Fi is being a difficult. Anybody out there want to say? Uh, good, thank you. Glad you in Seneca. Um, okay, so. Everybody who's watching, anybody that's seeing the uh, Wi-Fi give us problems, please shout out. Um, this is, we've done our previous Lightning Round with Laura's on YouTube, our live podcast. We're testing out a new theory on Facebook Live. So far, Facebook is losing to YouTube, just in case you guys were wondering. I have lit our candles in our candlelight vigil for our friends in the Ukraine and we will be getting a special guest appearance from my friend Amanda Kelly from Fwaggle Toy Manchester Terriers. And I am very, very excited to have her join us. And we're going to talk about the camaraderie of dog people. And even in these trying times, we are able to come together and help each other out and find joy in our ability to be together. And so I have my friend Stacy Belt, who will be doing our uh, capturing some of the comments for us. So if you guys have comments, drop them in the in the chat. We'll get them forwarded on to me, and that will all just go perfectly. I know it. <laughs> Meanwhile. What I want you all to remember and what I want you all to know about is that Pure Dog Talk is here for you. 
If you have questions, we are here to answer them. And your passion is our purpose. And that's all that matters. And if you have an idea for a podcast, drop me a note. If you want to check out our sponsors, by all means, visit with Trupanion Pet Insurance and also with Embark for Breeders DNA testing to help you get your traits figured out the, for the litter that you're planning, um, figure out your genetics, see why, all kinds of things that are available to you. So meanwhile, now that we've finally gotten everything sort of straightened off, um, Stevie Collins, welcome. Uh, how do you feel about some of these open forums winning and discrediting the work they do? Great question, Stevie. This is an ask me anything opportunity. So here you go. Stevie's kicking it off with a, with a truth bomb. I love it. Good job. Um, here's what I believe. Social media is a gift and a curse in the dog world. And I believe that very, very strongly. It is a huge part of why we started Pure Dog Talk. And wait for it. I think we might have a backup here. Oh, no. Call failed. Try again. Try again, Amanda. <laughs> um, the beautiful thing about social media is that we connect with breeders in other countries. We have a global community. It's part of the support for Ukraine and all of the things that we can do. Um, the downside is that a lot of times misinformation in, in a variety of venues actually uh, can be transmitted. And so what I feel very strongly about is that some of the available groups on social media do not have appropriate information or they have people who have misconstrued a situation or they have people who lost and they're mad about it and now they have a place to bitch. Um, so one of the things that Pure Dog Talk was designed to do was to provide accurate information to people. So if they wanted to have an answer to a question, they could get it from a trustworthy source. So that's my pitch for Pure Dog Talk. <laughs> and and it is it is truly one of the things that I think is the most important offering that we can provide on the podcast. And I really believe that people get upset and they vent on social media without having necessarily all the information. So that is, I see the downside to the Facebook groups as, as broached in Stevie's question. So, okay. Um, I know that my friend Amanda tried to call me and maybe she'll try and call me back and this time the phone call will come through. Meanwhile, um, what I want to talk about is the positive. And the positive um, in dog shows and in um, the communities that we've developed around purebred dogs is that dog people can be your best friends, literally. It is our tribe. It is our family. And the more people who we bring into that tribe, the stronger our tribe will be. And if you see a new person who is unhappy, maybe you should try helping them and, and see if that makes a difference in their world. Okay, hang on, Amanda. Let's see if this works. Who do we have here? Hello, Laura. <laughs> I love it. Okay, Amanda. So we have people with great questions. Welcome, Amanda Kelly from Fwaggle. Toy Manchester Terriers in Halifax, Nova Scotia. It's it's late there. Thank you for joining us. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. So hello to everyone. Yes. Um, okay, so we're already getting these really great questions from our listeners. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm bringing you in on this, and then later we are going to have. Later we are going to have the conversation. Oh, right. Lord. We're going to have the conversation okay. about um, our new t-shirt slogan. But for right now, we're talking about all of the things that we can do 
as a sport to build our camaraderie, whether it's global, whether it's local, whether with it's within our breed or not. Um, I've restarted this live stream, so hopefully everybody is back. I see most of you are. Um, I apologize for the complications. I do not know why Facebook is being mean to me, but it is. Uh, so hopefully, okay. I hear that the I hear that the stream is still not great. So hopefully, we're just gonna run with this and see where it goes. We will definitely be back to YouTube next month because this is is definitely making life more difficult. So. Talking about camaraderie, talking about the ways that we can work together. You'll all remember our 12 steps to a happier you, right? And some of the things that were in that apply to our camaraderie. And let's see if we can get our friend. Hello. How are you? I'm still great. Excellent. I'm so glad. We are definitely having live television today. It's so amazing. <laughs> it is. It is great. But I, I was listening to your intro, Laura, and I so love the topic, and I think it's um, so incredibly timely right now with everything. ...for the five days of war in Ukraine, and I think how much the world has changed in only five days and what remains the same is dog people being dedicated to helping dog people. Absolutely. And, you know, I think that, um, you know, we've talked with this before. So in my regular non-dog life, um, my job is um, working with the Canadian government as uh, in, in commemoration. So I've spent the last, you know, 15 years studying, um, the stories of people who served in in wars gone by. Yes. And I think that, you know, if I've learned only one, you know, hours of, of reading and sharing and writing the stories of those, those wonderful people, it's that the thing that all of them valued, it didn't matter if it was the First World War or the Second World War, valued their connection to the people that they love yes and the community that supports them. and the thing is true uh, for our dog community you know sometimes sometimes we can be pretty pretty mean to each other but when the uh, chips are down um, you know that the, the folks uh, in our dog world um, will will be there for one another and that's a pretty amazing gift yes. And I think that that is so the point of, of our tribe and our conversation with Auntie Lutin. Those of you who haven't listened absolutely should. It was very much a while. And um, on your end, I'm getting reports. If you can get a little closer to your mic, that would be great, Amanda. Um, okay. So while we are all supporting each other and we're here on the live podcast, let's do this. Performance dog food. Why do we feed or should we feed performance dog foods to pet dogs? Thoughts, Amanda? Well, I don't think we should. <laughs> well, there you go. Pet dogs, you know. Performance, uh, performance blend, um, you know, I, I'm not going to say that I'm a, a, a nutrition expert, but, you know, I, I find that um, performance blends tend to be very high in protein. Yes. Um, and... You know, that can be hard on the kidneys. Yes. And most dogs don't need it to lay on the couch. On. Yes. Absolutely true. So, I, I you know, agree with that. Case, uh, I agree with that. And I, I think that that is absolutely a thing. I think that we use our performance, our higher protein foods um, for our dogs that actually are working really hard. Field trial dogs, sled dogs, herding dogs, dogs that need extra energy. A dog lying on the couch does not need to eat a 32% protein fit. They just don't. It will okay. give them hot spots. It will make them fat. It
It's, I just, it's, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. Yeah. Okay, this is lightning round, so we're getting we're getting our questions in. Uh, Seneca Mostovich would like to know about gatekeeping. Is it always a bad thing, breeds, sports, or otherwise? Now I'm going to take one side. Amanda, you can have the other one. Flip a coin. I'm going with gatekeeping is bad. What's okay. your thought? I wanted that side. <laughs> You can do this. See, this is why this is why Amanda and I are really good because we can argue both sides of the same thing. So, go. All right. So okay, you need to go first because I. I'm going first. You quick come up with an argument. Gatekeeping is bad, and the reason I say that gatekeeping is bad is that our sport is shrinking. I'm not going to go with dying because that's a little melodramatic, but it's shrinking, and the people who are willing to the, at the ass crack is stupid and drive to a dog show and show their dog ribbon and go home and spend $500 for the pleasure of that are fading fast. And if we expect to um, continue on into the next century, hell, the next decade, I would say that gatekeeping is bad. So that's my um, philosophy. That's my thought. What is your thought, Amanda? Okay, so we have so many thoughts. Okay, <laughs> what am I going to talk about? Um, if I have to say, which apparently I do. You do. I You're on the spot, things. man. You signed up for this, like, yeah. totally. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say, you know, I um, Gatekeeping is bad. In a breed like poodles, gatekeeping is probably good. Right. You know. Right. Okay. I have friends who are groomers. Uh, I have a, a good friend in Florida who's a groomer. And, you know, we've had some really interesting conversations about gatekeeping. And her thinking on it is formed and informed by her um, her experiences as a groomer and what she sees come through the door in the form of very poorly bred, um, from very popular breeds. Mm -hmm. And um, so from that perspective, I think that, you know, if we're saying gatekeeping from the perspective of being very for those breeds, then yes, it's good. Okay. See? Excellent. Well done. All right. Everybody else out there, while you're thinking of another question here and have Stacy forward on to me, um, Amanda, talk to me about our contest for this evening. Okay. So I'm a little bit of like lately focused on, I don't know, not really self-help, but like all those little weird memes that you see. And every time I see them, um, dog shows, and you know, some of them are funny and some of them are not funny. But I had said to Laura, you know, we really could make some good Um, and you can buy your, there's a podcast for that t-shirt. So every time someone asks you a question, there's a podcast for that. Um, I, I don't know how big your towels are, Laura, but folks may want to buy more than one <laughs> towel so they can like line their whole setup with them. Um, they are like full size, like grooming, they're not just spit towels, right? So 
You know, I, I believe that, that at least two is sort of minimal. <laughs> okay, sounds great. Okay. Um, sounds like we're still having a problem with the actual live part of this. Hopefully it's being recorded and people will be able to check it out. Um, I don't know how to change the frame rate from 50 per second. You're talking to me, me. Like I don't, I, I barely, I can talk. I can show a dog. That's what I got. <laughs> um, so let's go with this t-shirt theme. What's our theme here? And just so everyone knows, the first item on my uh, to-do list is always make a list so that when I finish, I can go back and check it off. Um, but, yes, I made a list. And so I have, like, you know, I have different ones, some that are funny, some that are maybe some things that we might need to remind ourselves of in our low moments. Um, so where do you want to start, Laura? Um, I, I think that you should definitely start with your favorite. Okay, so here's my favorite. And I am not going to take credit for this because um, my, uh, you know, uh, uh, through a mutual friend, I, I met a uh, wonderful palm breeder um, from Asia, Toby, and we were having dinner and having a great conversation about, you know, the kind of the trials and tribulations of, um, you know, dog shows and competition and, you know, all of those challenges that you can sometimes face. And this was, I mean, this was several years ago. It really stuck with me. But I like to remind not just myself, but everyone else. Um, and it's this. Okay, you ready? Yes. When you, when you go hunting, you shoot at the birds in the air, not the ones on the ground. I like that. So sometimes I think that we find ourselves in positions where you know, we feel like we're being unfairly targeted. Um, you know, I think anyone who's had any success in any breed um, will say that they have felt like that sometimes. So um, it, uh, it's, a, it's a great reminder for me and for, you know, even just the, you know, the folks that are, are starting out um, to remember to hear and to assimilate, right? Just don't, we don't have the same perspectives. And sometimes what I think is a bird in the air, you think is a bird on the ground. Exactly, exactly. Well, and I just, I feel like I need to preface this by saying that I have no idea if that's actually a true hunting thing. Like maybe you do hit. No, you, you, you shoot at the birds, at the the birds in the air. Hunting. Absolutely. Shooting. Oh, see, and here's the thing about it. Shooting the birds on the ground <laughs> is considered like it's poor sportsmanship. Like that's, that's cheating. Right. So that's another speaking, coming from a hunting background. I'm telling you that is sort of a double entendre to that. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so that's one a little bit more serious. The second one for all of my friends out there who have been watching Inventing Anna. I don't know if you've seen it, Laura. Show, but they have this saying where they ground them. Okay. Just to remind themselves and give themselves power. If you've seen that. Interesting. Um, so like, okay. Are you going to say it with me, Laura? I'm a bad bitch. I am a bad bitch. I mean, that's... <laughs> um, I had it... Um, I, some of you on my, on my personal social media have seen the bumper sticker that I have that my mother bought for me when I went to college that I put on that I took to college with me that says, don't tell my mother I'm a dog handler. She thinks I play the piano in a whorehouse. Um, sort of with the reference 
that dog people, dog breeders, whatever, are bad. And and this was my opening pitch to the to the vet students to help them understand, no, we're not bad. Um, but this is a, a, a funny that's been around for a long time. I also have box, the bumper sticker that said, you say I'm a bitch like it's a bad thing. Yes, I think I have that one. Yes, it's 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 a personal favorite. <laughs> okay, so what's okay. next? What's our next? What's our next? Inventing Anna right, is um, so good. So Inventing Anna wins a prize here. All right, great. Um, next one on my list was absolutely inspired by one of the greatest registered names I ever saw on a dog, and I just think that it encapsulates um, my thinking a lot of the time <laughs> when I go to a dog show. There's a Chinese question, um, and her name was uh, Whispering Rain. I shaved my legs for this. Oh, my God, I love that. My legs for this, um, you know, encapsulate uh, what I think that I'm at a show. And it goes back to what we were talking about, in my opinion, about why gatekeeping is bad, right? Because the, it's already a frustrating experience for some people. And so when you make it a frustrating experience and then people are mean to them and then they're like, and I shaved my legs for this? You know, there's the gatekeeping piece. That's right. That's right. I like exactly. it. And uh, um, relax. We're all crazy. We are all crazy. The fact that we're doing this means that we're crazy. So let's just not try to out crazy each other. Um, okay. Uh, one of the things that makes me laugh the most is when, you know, we all have conversations and we're like, oh my God, she's so crazy. He's so crazy. And if you really stop and think about it, we're all nuts. So like, pot, may I introduce you to Kel? Right? Absolutely. And um, I've got one for you. I it's totally, and this is a good segue actually. Um, because Cindy Wright has a question about uh, thoughts on history and opinions on the consequences of war and implications of gene pool die off in those areas and those breeds. What breeds are we most concerned about in the current situation that may already be struggling? Great. Absolutely amazingly good question, Cindy. Um, I don't know exactly all of the breeders in the Ukraine, I clearly, um, I know that I have heard from Chihuahua. The global community, Amanda. Well, I think that um, we kind of, in answering this question, we need to, to take a broader view than just the, the countries that are directly involved in the conflict. Right. Um, I think that war and, and even the pandemic, you know, to a great extent, mm -hmm. has had a tremendous impact on absolutely every part of it. Yes. Um, I can tell you that here in Canada, just travel alone, you know, moving dogs around has become mm -hmm. incredibly difficult. And so, you know, anything that um, if our ability to work with one another, um, you know, and and if it, you know, God forbid the this particular conflict were to grow. Um, you know, it could have catastrophic implications because it's piling on top of existing issues. You know, when we had mm -hmm. um, the Second World War, we had a very different dog scene. 
Um, right. You know, a lot more people kept animals and bred them um, than is the case now. So, and and the, the, the way that we keep our dogs now, there's a lot more breeders who have, you know, very few dogs. Um, and for those breeds that are supported by breeders who have a few dogs, their um, ability to continue to produce at a rate that will maintain a healthy gene pool can be very quickly um, undercut. Yes, that 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 is really really. Good. I mean, when we look at breeds after World War II, say the Clumber Spaniel, I know personally. animals that they rebuilt the breed from okay and that was in large numbers and so now when you're talking about as you say you know individual breeders with one two three dogs and and then they're all gone i i just i can't even imagine it well, and, and my breed was a similar position. Breedable um, ancestry terriers, the, the larger variety uh, in the United Kingdom. And they did import from the United States um, in order to, you know, with rebuilding. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they were importing from a, another compromised population. We had here in the United States, I mean, just 10 years, a little over 10 years after the war ended, um, the, the the standard Manchester had to be rescued by the toy because the numbers were so low. So what we see um, now, you know, that years later, um, is that the coefficients of inbreeding, of inbreeding are incredibly high. Right. Um, and we have some ability within our worldwide population to bolster that. But, you know, if we look back at... Fairly small number of founding dogs, but to a large number of bottle. I, I, it is absolutely a, a valid point, and and I think that Sylvie makes a really good point as well. She just dropped in the comments. Um, there, are any number of breeds that are at significant risk if they have major breeders. Basset hounds do, she says. I saw several really major lab kennels, um, English cockers, a few others. Um, and it's not necessarily of the breeds essentially having to be rebuilt the way they did, like, say, for example, with Irish wolfhounds during the during World War II, but definitely of losing those major, those huge gene pool con contributors. And at some point, if people can't feed their dogs, I mean, people are in a, subways. I, I just can't even. Well, and, and I'm. You know, difficult to pick up uh, a large, you know, kennel and mm -hmm. and move it to. Um, uh, my heart breaks for every person that is in that country. I have such amazing respect for their resilience. Um, but, you know, she's right. There's a lot of potential for a lot of damage on every front for that wonderful country, which, you know, if we stop and think about it, a week ago was exactly like the, you know, city or town that we all live in. Well, and this is why there's five candles, because honestly, this is five days. And I, I, I think what's so incredibly difficult for all of us is just the the sheer mind numbing shock and and we're thousands and thousands of miles away um i for the people who are there on site i just i can't even begin to imagine so that with our theme of our new t-shirt motto um, I say united we stand. It's a little trite, but there it is. 
What say you, Amanda? I think that's a great one. I think that sounds great. Um, I really do think... Uh, it kind of goes with mine, which is a little bit um, more broad, but um, uh, kind of along which was we're friends and not just on Facebook. <laughs> And, you know, that's important. Yeah, the Orch Orchavka, I don't know how to say the name of that breed, but Sylvie's made and Hungary, where they are absorbing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people as refugees with their pets. I mean, the number part of why I did that interview with Auntie is that I had seen so many news reports of people who had left everything at home but brought their pet with them. Um, just the yeah. average people and their pets are... Um, People in Ukraine are saving their pets before their thing, just like we would. And and I believe that that shared humanity is an enormous piece of the United We Stand concept. Absolutely. Thank you, Bethany. there of the major kennel organizations have come out. I haven't seen CKCs, but I um, AKC posted one today sharing their solidarity with Ukraine and the Ukrainian dog people. So that is at this point about all we can do. Um, and stand united. So you Amanda I am sorry you guys this this particular um format I was hoping was going to be a little bit more interactive because it was Facebook got me so there you go back to YouTube next month <laughs> the first day of April we will have a uh, an important conversation to carry on so thank you all for joining us on Pure Dog Talks live podcast. Thank you, Amanda, for bringing us your invaluable knowledge. And thank you, everybody, for stopping by to join us. Thanks, Laura. All right. Thanks, everybody.